Hello everyone, my name is Brayden. I'm from 3A. Today my speech is if there was no gravity on Earth. Everyone could stand on Earth because of gravity. Have you ever thought of what might happen if there was no gravity on Earth? If there was no gravity, our life would be very interesting. I always wonder what would happen if there was no gravity. So I'm going to tell you all what our life would be like without it. How would people's lives change? If there was no gravity, our life would be fun, however difficult. The first problem is that everyone would fly everywhere. It sounds fun, but think of if you walk up in someone's house and bump into the ceiling. I guess someone might invent a new belt called the sleeping belt. It would make a lot of money. The second problem is that when you go shopping, your things will fly everywhere. I would have to remind people to tie their bags to their body. <laughs> How would our transportation change? There will be no more cars or motorcycles because they wouldn't help you move. There will be also no pollution because we wouldn't use cars, planes, or anything else to travel. We could save a lot of energy to do other things like build houses on other planets. The rules of sports would have to change if we had no gravity. Here are three examples of how sports would change would be different. In basketball, you wouldn't need to dribble the ball. You, you would just wear a space suit, hold the ball tight, jump up to the sky until you hit your head on planet and slam dunk. Secondly, if you were having a running race, you would have to wear a kind of shoe like a stick to the surface of the earth. Otherwise, you would just stay in the same place. If you wanted to play soccer, you would have to play in a spaceship so the ball wouldn't fly away. It would be fun to have no gravity for an hour or a day. But I wouldn't be happy if there was no gravity for a long period of time. Everything in our lives like transportation, entertainment, and sports will have to change. And there will be lots of problems to solve because of it. Thank you for listening. There are many kinds of shampoos in Taiwan. But I'll tell you about the coolest shampoo in the world. One weekend, I went to my grandpa's house. That night, I saw my grandpa lock something into a box and put it under the sink. I really wanted to know what it was and why my grandpa wanted to lock it in the box. If it was something really cool, I'd tell everyone about it. So I decided to look for it. I waited for him to fall asleep. And I slowly sneak into his bedroom. I walk in the dark room on tippy toes. Then suddenly, I heard something that sounded like a sick dinosaur. That was my grandpa. I moved slowly and looked around the room. Suddenly, I saw something shiny under the bed. As I tried to reach for it, I touched something soft. It was a piece of moldy bread. I pulled my hand back and tried not to gag. When I recovered, I tried it again. And finally, I found a key. I dashed to the bedroom and tried it on the heavy box. It opened. Inside, I saw a strangely shaped golden bottle in front of me. There were no instructions, so I had no clue how to use it. When I pulled some on my hands, something crazy happened. Everything began to grow, even my hair. I thought that was pretty amazing, so I began to wash my hair. While I was scrubbing, I began to sing Endgame by Taylor Swift. What? Taylor Swift? Why am I singing this song? I mumbled. All at once, the fire disappeared. When I touched my head again, I realized that had long hair. What? Maybe my mind is playing tricks on me. I said to myself, I washed my hands again to make sure that my fingers weren't feeling funny because of the shampoo. I saw a strange person in a mirror. That was me. Can you imagine me with long golden hair like Taylor Swift? That's ridiculous. A few minutes later, I saw my grandpa lock standing behind me in the mirror. He took a hard look and fell on the ground laughing. Just kill me, I thought. Then he said, okay, try washing your hair again, but this time 
picture yourself. I got the shampoo right away and washed my hair once more. When I look up the second time, I find I saw my normal self again. I, I was so relieved. Now, I don't steal anything from my grandpa because things get too crazy. I, I learned that stealing from grandpa was a very bad idea. So, my, he has so many mysterious secrets. So, my advice to you is to seek, seek what's safe. Next time, steal from your brother. Thank you for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Champion. I'm from 3A. Today my speech is, what would happen if cockroaches rule the world? One day, I woke up early and found myself in a dark place. I had no idea where I was or how I got there. I looked around and no one else was there except me. I saw a picture on the wall of a king cockroach wearing a crown on his head and stealing human's food. How crazy, I thought. Where was I and how was that crazy picture doing on the wall? In the picture, the king wrote all the ants, bees, bugs, lizards, fish, and worms. All the animals were kept in the king's home, underground in the sewer. The king gave everyone different roles. Some had to steal food for the king, some had to steal food for the king to eat. Others had to build houses in the sewer. As my eyes adjusted, I realized I was in fact in the sewer, under the control of the king. Suddenly, something flew past me. I followed it and found myself in a different place. I saw the king cockroach sitting in his room. When I saw him, I knew I was in trouble. The king did not make me feel welcome. It was clear the cockroaches didn't like humans. Then the king turned me into a cockroach and ordered me to build him a home in the sewer. I needed to go home. My dad and my mom miss me and I miss them. Finding the magic machine was my only chance of getting out of this stinky situation. I looked at my iPhone and it trans the magic machine to Alishan's little train. When I found when I found it, I saw the machine, but there was a big cockroach looking right at me, probably looking for human's food. I raced over the magic machine before he could get to me. I got into the machine and it magically flew me out of the station. The next, the next thing I remember was waking in my real bed. There were no cockroaches around me. It was just a dream. I felt happy that I was not a cockroach. I was just a boy. I brushed my teeth and washed my face. When I ate my breakfast, I thought to myself, do I like cockroaches? My answer was no, and I hope I'll never dream of such a thing again. Thank you, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Eileen. The title of my speech is An Important Moment in History. Competition can sometimes be deadly but sometimes it can lead to growth and even improve technology. The space race was a competition just like that. In the 60s, the United <coughs> States and the Soviet Union competed against each other. Each side wanted to prove its technological advantages over the other. This rivalry would lead to both countries making rapid progress, particularly in spaceflight capabilities. At first, the Soviets took the lead by launching the world's first satellite in the Earth's orbit. The Americans were afraid that the Soviets could spy on the U.S. or even launch a nuclear bomb in space. This made Americans work harder because they didn't want to lose. And just like that, President Eisenhower created NASA to lead further research and development. In 1959, the Soviets made another huge advancement by launching the first robotic space probe to hit the moon, which in turn helped Soviet astronaut Yuri Gagarin orbit the Earth. The space race then heated up when President Kennedy made the bold announcement that the U.S. would land a man on the moon before the end of the 60s. With perseverance and determination, NASA sent Alan Shepard into space, 
and after the ups and downs, John Glenn became the first American to orbit Earth. This was followed by NASA's Gemini project. It carried two astronauts and allowed them to spacewalk, which put America into the lead. The Soviets caught up and achieved an unmanned soft landing on the moon. However, their program slowed after experiencing a number of serious failures and delays, which gave the Americans a better chance to reach the moon first. NASA took this opportunity, dedicating the Apollo program to the national goal of a manned moon landing. Unfortunately, Apollo 1 was a disaster. It caught fire during a pre-launch test and killed the whole crew inside. People were shocked and devastated, but they didn't give up. There are more Apollo missions and NASA learned from each one. Finally, NASA was ready. On July 17, 1969, three astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins were carried by Apollo 11. And after a three-day journey, they landed on the moon. Armstrong recorded this important historical moment and stated that it was one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Landing on the moon was one of the greatest achievements of the 20th century. Remember, at that time, computers were just being invented and most of the calculations had to be done by hand. The program involved 34,000 NASA employees, including minority and female engineers. People put aside their differences and worked together to reach one huge common goal. The Apollo program greatly helped the understanding of the moon. It also accelerated innovations in rockets, computers, and even inspired new generations to become scientists. The space race taught us that cooperation and determination can help reach your dream. Also, even though competition can create difficulties for projects, it also forms a great environment for advancement. I can help with your success. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Jenna. My topic is The Secret Door. It was a Monday night after school. I was soaking wet from the rain outside, so I went to take a shower. When I was done, I suddenly saw a secret door in my bedroom. Two big, shiny eyes came out from inside and said, Come with me, I'll take you in. A bright light washed over me. I was so scared, but I really wanted to know what was inside. So I went in the pretty little door. I was so excited to go through the door. I went through a dark, narrow path. It was so dark that you could only see the light at the end of the path. When I went in, I saw a colorful rainbow over a castle made of candy. There were three pretty fairies and happy-looking children playing and laughing together. The fairies were giving all of the children chocolate to eat. This is a perfect place for me to stay, I thought. But wait! Mom said that children shouldn't eat chocolate. Then suddenly, the sky turned gray, and the castle turned into an ugly haunted house. The pretty fairies also turned into strange-looking witches. The first one had three red eyes. The second one had a big head. And the last one had one long and one short arm. All the children turned into frogs. Now I know what they fed the children. They fed them mud. I felt very scared, so I hid in the bushes. What should I do now? I quickly glanced around and spotted an empty house in front of me. I ran into it. When I opened the door, it made a high-pitched squeal. I tiptoed in. There was nothing but spider webs and dust everywhere. It was so quiet that you could even hear a needle drop on the floor. Something poked me from behind. I almost screamed out loud. When I turned around, I saw a girl. A normal little girl just like me. 
She was the one that brought me through the little door. She needed my help. She had been there for many days and couldn't find her way home. We hid in the house, waiting for the witches to leave. Then finally, when we thought they were gone, we found the dark narrow path that would take us home. But one of the witches suddenly saw us, so we ran as fast as we could. I heard somebody shouting, "Jenna, Jenna, wake up! Time to go to school." <sighs> It was just a dream. I got up feeling tired and confused. At school, a new student joined our class, and guess what? She was the same girl I met in my dream. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. My name is Joseph. I'm from Class Three A. My speech is Life Under the Sea. One day, I was lost, and it was very late. I didn't know where my home was. Suddenly, I saw a stranger walk towards me. I was so scared, so I ran. I ran so fast, but he could run faster than me. He caught me easily and said, "Don't be afraid. I will take you home. But first." You must take this pail. Heh heh heh. What 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 is this pail for? I asked. He didn't answer me, and for some reason, I trusted him. After he took me home, I wondered how this stranger knew where I lived, but that wasn't important anymore. I took the pail and I went to sleep. The next day, I woke up very early, and remember feeling strange. Why was it so dark? It was six in the morning. Maybe I was having illusion. I felt so thirsty, and all I wanted to do was drink some water and go back to sleep. But when I stretched my arm to take my cup, I was shocked. I didn't have hands, only fins. All of a sudden, I felt water all around me. Then I knew what the pail was for. It turned me into a fish. An hour had passed, and I felt so lonely without my family and friends. Suddenly, a big shadow swam by. It looked like a type of fish. "Hey, you!" I yelled. "My name is Joseph. How about you?" The big fish turned around. I saw his face and realized he was a shark. I swam away quickly and hid behind a rock. The shark replied, "Don't be scared. My name is Brayden." I just want to be friends with you. When I found out he wasn't going to eat me, I swam out behind the rock. Not long after, we became the best of friends in the sea. Living under the sea was very boring in the beginning, so I thought of games to play with Brayden. I remembered when I was still a human, I really liked to play basketball, so I taught Brayden how to play basketball. First, I told him how to dribble. Then we practiced how to pass the ball. Last, we had a dribbling race. We played for so many hours, and by the end, I'd won every game. <laughs> Brayden said he really liked playing basketball, and that he would play with me every day. So many days passed, and I missed my life on land. I wanted to turn back into a human. So I could live with my family, but if I turn back into a human, I will miss my life under the sea with my shark friend Brayden. I was very confused and thought for a long time. In the end, I thought my family were more important, so I chose to return to land. Apparently, all I had to do was retake the pail. After taking it, my hands and feet grew back in an instant. I said goodbye to Brayden. But he just made some strange noise. I didn't quite understand what the noise meant, but I thought it meant goodbye. Thank you for your listen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kenny. Today, I'd like to talk about a day as a cockroach. It was a crazy day. I woke up in a dark, creepy place. The air was not fresh. It smelled of rotting food mixed with dirt. But I found myself strangely enjoying that smell. Huh? What happened? I lifted my hands and saw six 
stick like limbs. Was I going crazy? I tried to step forward, but I fell into some water. Then I saw my reflection as I was getting up. Oh my god, I had turned into a cockroach! How could this be possible? I looked around some more and realized that I was in a sewer. I decided to climb up the wall. It took a lot of time, but it worked. My feet could stick on the walls. I walked across the ceiling and thought, man, this is awesome. So then I began to think about what had happened. And suddenly, it came to me. The night before, my family and I decided to go to the Kidong Night Market. Mom had given my brother and I $300 each, then they went off to get food. My brother ran off to play ring toss, so I was left alone. I was feeling thirsty, so I walked for a walk to find drinks. That's when I met the creepy looking old lady. She had no hair and also wore a mask over her face. She said, come here and have the best drink ever, kid. So I did. It tasted sweet at first, but then I got really sick. My body suddenly felt really weak and everything went dark. I felt somewhat dizzy once I was done thinking. Now, all I really wanted to do was find that woman so I can turn back to a human again. I began to find my way, pushing my feet to crawl as fast as I could. When I finally found an opening to get out, I saw a sign that read Gao Xiang hanging over the road. How am I going to get back to Kidong? I asked myself. Then I suddenly noticed that the HSR station was nearby. I stretched my legs and my back before I started to walk again. While I was doing that, I made the craziest discovery. I had wings, so I decided to fly to the station. When I finally arrived, I ran all the way to the train and hid under the seats. Once I got to Kidong, I tried to find that woman, but she had disappeared. How am I going to find her again? I asked myself nervously. Then I looked down and surprisingly found her footprints. I followed them to a big house and squeezed myself through the door seam. <coughs> when I got inside, I saw many colorful camps everywhere. Some read, dog's antidote. Others read, bird antidote. Then I eyes stopped and squinted at a bottle. Cockroach antidote? Yes, that was it. I quickly flew on the shelf and climbed onto the bottle. I gulped the liquid down as fast as I could and finally returned to my human self. Then I quietly slipped some pig antidote into the woman's water. She drank it and turned into a pig. I grabbed her right away and threw her out of the, out of the window. And that's how everything ended. Thank you for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Vivian. My topic is, if I were an inventor. Sometimes I feel like my life is boring, so I want something to change. I like solving problems, I like to think. I thought about what I could do to make my life better. Become the president of Taiwan? Become a writer? I decided that it would be best to become an inventor. That way, I can create anything I want. The first thing I would make is a machine that can control teachers' minds. It would tell teachers to not give children any homework. Students would party every day. My machine would make teachers think that we only need to go to school once a month. We'd have more time to play video games. On the day we do have school, class will only last for 10 minutes, and we have break time for the rest of the day. Every, everyone would be happy because teachers wouldn't have to work and students wouldn't have homework either. The second thing that I will make is an invisible cloak. Once I put it on, no one would be able to see me. I would do a lot of crazy things like 
steal money from a bank with it, so I could be rich. If I were rich, I would buy a big house, get ten TVs and many computers. I would also get free rides on Ferris wheels, water slides, roller coasters, or anything else that requires money to get on. I would also wear my invisible cloak to get up late at night to watch TV without my parents seeing me. The third thing that I will make is a magic broom. It could go ten thousand kilometers per hour. So that way, it would only take me an hour to get to the USA. My magic broom would be big enough to take my family and all of my friends. I would use it to sweep the floor too. Then I wouldn't have any chores at home. When I need to write something, my broom could also turn into a pen. You just need to spray some ink on its brush. Then anything that you draw will become real. I would draw the right amount of pockets so that I can have a lot of other magical things. I would also draw myself a Seven Eleven so that I can get things for free. Being an inventor would be good because I would be able to make many new things that would help everyone. I would make everyone's life better by creating all the things they might need. I make devices that help those who can't see, hear, or walk well. With my inventions, they'd be able to do all the things they couldn't before. I would make a machine that would print real money. You just put trash in it, and it turns into money. This way, poor people could also be rich. I would help many people if I were an inventor. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. My name is Win. I'm from 3A. My speech is if I were an animal. I always hate being human because there was always a lot of work to do, like going to school, doing homework, or any chores. I'd always wanted to be become an animal because animals don't need to do any of those things. Luckily, my dream to become an animal came true. It all happened in my bedroom one morning. I woke up and there was a letter on my head that said, "You you can turn into anything you like after you read this letter." I didn't believe it at first, but I was curious and tried it. The first animal I turned into was a dog. I'd always wanted to become a dog because many people like them. There are people who train dogs by giving them things to eat. The most wonderful thing about dogs was that is that they don't need to go to school. As a dog, I could do whatever I, I wanted, like run under the sun and sleep beside the road. It was great because nobody told me to go away. But being a dog was not always fun. For example, one day I got caught by a dog catcher, and I had no choice but to eat yucky dog food. So I guess being a dog was not the best choice. The next animal I turned into was a cat. I'd always wanted to be a cat because they could sleep for hours and be lazy every day. When I was a cat, I played with a ball all day and jumped up and down from high places. Being a cat was not always fun because I could only brush my hair with my saliva, and I couldn't sit on the toilet. I tried once and I fell in, so I guess being a cat was not the best, not a good choice either. Last. I turned into a dinosaur. I'd always thought dinosaurs were very cool. When I was a dinosaur, I could do a lot of things, like fight and win all the time. I was so big that I could step on other people. I fought for our country, and we would always beat other countries. However, there was one thing I could not do. 
I couldn't play paper scissors rock properly. I could only do a scissors like a T Rex. Because I, of this, I don't think being a dinosaur was the best choice either. Being an animal, you don't need to go to school, do homework or any chores. You could just be lazy and wander around all day long if you choose. But when I was an an was an animal, I missed being able to talk, eat yummy food, and sleep beside a rock. Now I know what it's like to be both. It's hard to decide whether I would rather be a human or an animal. Would you rather be an animal, or a human, or an animal? Thank you for listening.